In this lab, we will learn how to handle exceptions in a Spark Scala application. Check the link in the description for our top-rated Spark Scala and Big Data courses on Udemy. We can use simple try-catch blocks to handle exceptions. If an error occurs in the try block, it will be caught in the catch block. We can handle exceptions by displaying an error message on the console or by exiting the application. Let's add a try-catch block in the main method. We will include a logger statement with an error level and use e.printStackTrace to display the error details. This ensures that any error in the main method is properly caught and logged. Now let's run the application. It ran successfully since we have not introduced any errors. Let's test with a table name that does not exist. As expected, it entered the exception block in the main method and we got the full stack trace. The error message confirms that the table was not found. We are invoking a method from the Postgres common object, but since exception handling is done in the main method, the error was caught there. Now let's go to the fetch data frame from PG table method and implement exception handling at that level. We will wrap the entire method inside a try-catch block and print the error message to the console. However, the method is expected to return a data frame. If an exception occurs, it doesn't know what to return. Running the application now will result in an error because in case of an exception, it cannot return a data frame. So how do we fix this? Scala provides an easy way to handle such cases using the option, sum, and none concepts. Instead of returning just a data frame, we will return option data frame. If the operation is successful, it returns some data frame. If an error occurs, it returns none. This way, we avoid returning an invalid value when an exception occurs. Let's make this change and run the application. There is one more change required in the main method where we invoke this function. Since the function now returns an option data frame, we need to use .get to retrieve the actual data frame. Now, our changes include modifying the method signature to return option data frame using sum for success, none for failure, and .get in the main method. Now, when an exception occurs, it enters the fetch data frame from PG table exception block first, then enters the main method's exception block. Since we are returning none, the program does not handle it correctly. There are multiple ways to address this issue. One way is to exit the program when an exception occurs. In case of an error, the program will terminate instead of proceeding further. Running the application now, we see that it entered the exception block of a fetch data frame from PG table but it did not return to the main method because the program exited. If we correct the table name, everything should work fine. This is how we can handle exceptions in a SparkScala program. We can add try-catch blocks in other methods as well. 
If a method does not return anything, then option, sum, and none are not required. Only when a method returns a value do we need to handle it properly. Now, let's implement exception handling in the create spark session method. Since this method returns a spark session, we will handle it using option. We will modify the return type to option spark session. In case of an exception, it will return none, and in case of success, it will return some spark session. In the main method, we will use dot get to retrieve the spark session. Let's run the application again. It should execute as expected. It successfully created a spark session and completed the execution. Exit code zero indicates successful completion. We can also use system.exit in the catch block of create spark session. If the spark session fails to initialize, the program will exit immediately. These are some of the ways you can implement exception handling in a Spark Scala application. Thank you very much. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe for more informative content on cloud, data, AI, and generative AI. Hit the bell icon to receive future notifications.